Have at thee. Have at thee. What? Have at thee, varlet? Huh? Scoundrel? Still not getting it. A uh, whippersnapper? Quit calling me names. That's not cool. Yeah, you better stop. Or you get the snake. Nobody cares about the snake. snake. Oh, come on, fellas. I like snakes. Okay, people, today let's take a quick look at the NECA Dungeons & Dragons Strongheart and Zarek. Zarek? Zarak? Zarak? It doesn't matter. It's a cool little green guy. And remember back when I said, you know what? I wasn't into this version of Dungeons & Dragons when I was a kid, so I'm gonna admire from afar. I'm gonna window shop. I'm just gonna look and go, yep, those are pretty sweet, but not for me. So of course, here I am with Grimsword and Warduke and then Wave 2 because god dang are these some cool figures. But I can't say it's without its nostalgia and it's completely by accident, a coincidence, because I did have one when I was a kid. I had Zarek, but I didn't know what it was. It just kind of hung out in random places, mostly in Castle Grayskull, if I remember right. So when this line came along and Veeb started talking about his immense love for the vintage figures, we started going through the checklists and everything, and I saw a picture of the original figure and just right upside the head. Just a flood of memories feelings. You know how it is when you see something from childhood that you hadn't thought about for years and years and years? It was then and there that I decided I must have the updated figure. So I might as well get the rest of the figures to go along with it. That's how it starts. That's how they get you. It was kind of flip-flopping here because he's just so goody two-shoes. Then Veeb's opened his a couple of weeks ago and I messed with it and now Oh, I'm so happy to have this. But staring at these packages, just look at this fantastic artwork. That is just damn majestic. And you can't help shivering when you look at this one. It's creepy sinister. On the side, there's their names, Dungeons and Dragons, two headshots. On the back, more pretty promo pics and bios for both. Long story short, Strongheart is valiant. Whereas Zarek does not give a damn. On the other side, nice shots with the words again. Same thing on top, different order. On bottom, legalese, barcodes. Let's get these open. Oop, jumping the gun because there's an opening flap. There's a big picture of Strongheart and then the figure itself through a window, all the accessories. And that is the same thing for Zarek with a little piece of Velcro. Beautiful picture, beautiful figure. Now let's get these open. Just look at this guy, good grief. I, I can't believe I was flip-flopping. I can't believe I was fence sitting for this character because now that I have it in hand, this is as knightly as you can get. This is just truth, justice, and the knightly way. It's Tom Selleck in a set of armor. What more do you want? There is stuff going on all over the place here. The armor plates, the mail, the hangy downs, the hangy ups, the belts and the belt buckles. I guess the plainest thing on the figure is the torso, and even that is supposed to be some kind of metal plate of some kind. Look at all that sculpt work. Then you get to the boots and it's supposed to simulate some kind of leather, some blue leather. <laughs> There's the wrinkles. I have the crests here on the front of the shoulder pads or the breastplate. <laughs> I don't know armor. Leave me alone. But even that is a softer material working out to the shoulder pads that are also on a soft material that just flips up out of the way of all that beautiful sculpt work on the arm. I'm skipping right over all the colors. You see it as we're going along, right? There's this lighter blue, there's this darker blue, there's this dirty blue with all this nice silver line work in between it. The blue up here, just clean inside while looking dirty. The, the paintwork is clean, but then there's a wash to everything. There's a dry brush on top of that to bring out that texture and the patina to the <laughs> simulated metal parts this cloth cape so shiny there's wire in the sides there's wire at the bottom you can pose it around if you want what's crazy to me and i'm just now discovering this under the cape there's so much more intricate sculpt and little rubber pieces going on this is glued down oh there's a peg hole right there i'll have to glue that back in but that's where it's supposed to go and look at this chain 
That's crazy. That's insane. I will never see that in a display, but they did it. They put it back there. A leather texture to the belt, a sword sheath strap hanging off, and the little metal studs painted. You guys know that's one of my favorite things. But then again, working to the face. <laughs> that is just a hero's face. That's a face you can trust. The helmet is amazing, and these metal wings flying back, not as soft as I would like them to be. They do have some flex to them, so they'll be hard to break. And then the plume up on top, beautiful sculpt with some wash in it, bringing out all that detail. And I think that's supposed to be articulated. Is it a little ball joint? But best of all, even though I hate to cover up that face, this does hinge down. And you get to about right there, it feels very, very tight. But if you keep pushing, you can get his eyes peering out through that slot. He's just a mean looking hero knight. <laughs> as mean as that looks, it still doesn't make him the bad guy. You could still tell that this is the good guy. Honestly, I am surprised at how much I love this overall look. I usually don't go for the Boy Scouts. This is unmistakably the Boy Scout, but here we are. Articulation wise, again, this moves. I, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be glued or not, but it's not coming out, so I'm calling it a joint. And then this hinges up. I'm not quite sure what's going on at the top of the neck. I think it's a dumbbell with a ball at the bottom of the neck. Because you can look up and then shift forward and look down. Oh, that tilt. Mm. Dungeons to the left of me, dragons to the right. Seems to be a peg coming out to the arm, and like I said, the shoulder pad is soft, gets up out of the way, so this rotates around. You gotta kind of force it once you get to here. You gotta just tear something up. No, 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 keep going. There you go. And then hinges, whoa, past 90. Swivel at the bicep. Hinges swivel at the elbow, and it seems that this is an overlay because it's turned to the side a little bit. So I'm going to bend the arm, and then is that a joint of some kind? It has some movement below the elbow. So the elbow bends to there, and then... I am not sure. But then there's swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. There's a dumbbell or a ball joint mid torso and then a ball joint at the waist. So you get some crunch there and then extra crunch there. And then arcing back goes to about right there, but it exposes some flat spots. Tilt, tilt, rotation. Easily see that there's a ball joint coming out to the hip and then this is flexy, so up to here, back to there. And, oh, out better than some Spider-Mans. Rotation up at that assembly, hinge and swivel at the top of the knee, hinge and swivel at the bottom of the knee. The double knee goes to about right there. Then at the ankle, there is a horizontal swivel. There's a hinge that goes to there. Hinge goes there, and then a forward-facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Strongheart comes with two fists. There are two open, relaxed hands. Two large grip hands for larger grips. <laughs> And then two smaller grips. Here's a comparison of the two rights. It's not a great big difference, but it'll matter here in a minute. The first weapon that looks out of place with everything because of the gold is this hammer. Again, I don't know the vintage figures, but I know that this is a bigger grip than most of the rest of the weapons, so that bigger hand is meant for this. Verily! But then the sword falls back into the overall color scheme with the silvers and the dark, dark gray for the handle. Right into the hand that goes. But there is a taper to this one, so if you wanted to use the smaller grip hand, it takes a little bit more pushing, but you can get it in there and it's more secure. But I really think the small grip is for this dagger because it has a way smaller handle than the rest. Oh, and it's pointy too. Watch out for that, especially when you're pushing it into here. But yeah, that's exactly what the smaller hand hands for. Then there's the sheath for the sword, a little ornamental in the silver parts and then some wraps. But the neatest thing is oh, you can store the dagger on here too. That's just awesome. Store the sword away, store the dagger away if I can get it. There we go. And then that goes on the hip. I would suggest taking the sword out and going this way because you don't want to force the dagger sheath through that loop. The last thing is the shield and it fits right in with the color scheme of everything else. This is elegant. It's almost simple compared to the rest of the suit of armor. You have the gray blue base with this metal look, these bands held on with these studs. And then on the back is a wood grain with a darker brown and these leather straps again held in with studs. They didn't have to paint these, but they did. Put the relaxed hand in there, slide the bigger band on and then Put the hand through that one and there we go that works perfect i'm gonna have to find some kind of mountaintop dial or background or something because that is where he belongs oh and look at this not quite as intricate as strongheart but 
he makes up for it in sheer evil. And the first thing I notice that's probably hard to see on camera is the high points. You see the blue is dry brushed up on the top of the wrinkles. It just works really well to bring out some of that sculpted detail. I don't know. You get back and it's very hard to see, but you get up on it and there we go. See it right there? It brings out the texture and it adds a little more depth to it. It is just so well done. I think subtle is the hardest thing to get done at a factory and they did it very, very well here. But that's blue on black. You get to the reds and it's a little messier, but I almost feel like it may be on purpose because <laughs> it brings out that extra sculpt on the edge of the collar, on the gloves with the wrinkles and between the fingers, around the pinstriping on these pouches, both on the front and the back along with these gold buttons punched in. And like I said a minute ago, I can just appreciate that kind of extra mile. Gold is nice and clean on the sheaths. Nice wrap sculpt around the ankles and around the feet. You get up close and again, that blue helps bring out that texture to the clothing, just adding another thing to look at. Cause there's even some up here on the smoother, shinier collar but you can really see it in the hood, that blue popping that out with the black wash. This is always a sign of some mischief going on. But then you get up under that hood and just, oh, pure 80s goodness. That green is absolutely perfect with that wash to bring out the scar and some warts and that smile, those cheeks, the chin, but it's the eyes that get me. They are very old Halloween mask. But at the same time, that's no human eyes. That is some demon looking back at you. And the further you dip the head, Oh man, the crazier scary it gets. Just look at that. You do not want him peering out at you from behind some bushes in the darkness. And the best thing about this, it evokes that childhood feeling, that vintage figure, just everything updated. It's beautiful. I mean, I'm sure the rest of the figures are like that, but having this one when I was a child, it makes it even better. I think you can, well, I'm sure the head comes off because there's an extra, but you have the green neck up under there and you can pull off the collar if you want. And there, there's a blue shirt for no reason. It's just painted. Oh, well, you can kind of pull this away and the whole torso is blue, I think. That may be to use with the extra head, but can you put this on and does, I doubt it looks right. Well, no, I am completely good with this too. So if you want to army build these guys, you can have collar on, collar off. You can have hooded, unhooded. So that's at least four options. <laughs> okay, it's a small army, but it works. Oh, well, more army building would be taking off the gear. So there's that. But since I have the collar off, let's go over articulation there, then put it on and I'll show you the range with it. There is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball going down into the body. You can look up, can look down. There's so much tilt and then left and right. The collar doesn't hinder it as much as you would think. You can still look up, look down, there is still some tilt. Everything rolls with it and then left and right. I almost want to say there is a ball joint at the shoulder because you do get some shift forward and back and maybe some up and down. It does rotate all the way around. Again, the collar gets in the way, but there. There is the spread apart double elbow where it's actually a hinge and swivel, hinge and swivel. And that'll get you about right there. Swivel at the wrist with the hinge in and out. Torso is tricky. I do believe there is a ball joint at the waist and I'm not sure if there's anything above because you gotta kind of hold onto the crotch and move it around. There is some hula hoop actually. Hmm, I would like to see what's under there. Ball coming out to the hip, comes up to here, goes back and goes out. Single hinge and swivel at the knee because of the length with the bagginess it doesn't come up to quite 90. Then the ankle hinges way back and forward and front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, like I already showed, the head does come off and you can replace that with this unhooded head. It looks very stubby with the collar on. There you go, it's a different character. I do wish there were different facial expressions. In fact, the more I look, the more I think that this is the same sculpt, just hooded and not hooded. Maybe we can get an accessory pack later with different heads. Uh -huh. Then for hands, there are two open relaxed, two fists if he wants to go hand to hand, one large grip, and then two smaller grips. And I think there's only one large grip to hold the big, huge gold dagger, but it does look good. I didn't realize how much that color would tie in with the buttons and the buckles and the sheaths, because then there are two smaller throwing daggers. That's what the funky, trigger finger hand thing is for. I can live with that. And then they store away nicely in those double sheaths. There's this vial of red 
potion? I'm guessing it's a poison of some kind? Red's always bad, right? And he can hold that in the bigger grip hand. Then there is this grappling hook with the well, it's string, but it's meant to be rope at this scale. And if I read the back of the package right, this is meant to be his garage. But then there's this loop here on the back of the belt. And if you kind of get the string going around, yeah, just hanging down like that. He doesn't care. He's just going to drag it behind him. Now these are seven inch scales, so they're standing a bit taller. Strongheart stands at about seven and a quarter up to the top of his actual head, and then eight and a quarter to the top of the plume. Zarek is about five and a quarter to the top of his head and six to the point of his hat, which absolutely works with War Duke and Grimsword. Damn, Strongheart, you're a little outnumbered. Come on, wave three. Depending on which Masters of the Universe line you collect, here is the classic Sea Man, and then the Master Verse. 40th anniversary He-Man. Here's a Four Horsemen Mythic Legions Knight and a McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Superman. And then they'll tower over your Hasbro lines that are somewhere in 112th scale like Star Wars Black Series or Marvel Legends. So at the end of the day, dang it, I love this line. And I really didn't want to because, man, I did not need another line to buy. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. <laughs> It'll make you do some silly things. Well, when it comes to toys, it's silly fun things. Zarek hit me like a ton of bricks. And I am just as happy now with this as I was when I was a kid with the vintage figure. And again, Strongheart surprised me. I didn't think I'd be into him, but man, once I had him in hand, saw those silvers and everything, he won me over, is really what I'm trying to say. Well, I guess I could say the same about all the figures. Well, okay, War Duke is iconic. Even if you weren't into Dungeons and Dragons, you ran across this somewhere. But Grimsword, I had kind of the same feeling I did as Strongheart. It was just a, a silly 80s design, overdone. There's snakes all over it. Hey, do you like snakes? Let's just throw it, blam! But once I got this figure in hand, I almost like it more than War Duke. And that's how I feel about Strongheart now. The design is, well, so strong that it just draws you in. Now, I don't like him more than Zarek because Zarek has heart and soul behind it. That It just speaks to my inner child. So he's my clear winner, but all of these are gonna find their way into a Dungeons and Dragons display. God dang it, NECA. I didn't wanna do this. Mm. But I can't complain too much. And for everybody wondering, I should have said this way at the first, but I got these from a muck time. I came back from PowerCon and Veebs had his review samples that I messed with for a little bit before I left his house, drove down here. And I swear it was a day or two and they popped up on a muck time. And I thought, well, that's fate right there. I better go ahead and grab them. Click PayPal away. And here we are, pretty plastic in my hands. It's a good day.